I love Jesus' stories of unclean spirits. I seem to see a lot of unclean spirits around me all the time. <laughs> I hope that other people don't perceive me as having an unclean spirit. They might perceive me as having a, a strange sense of humor, maybe, but, but not an unclean spirit. I hope not. I hope not. Um, this is a wonderful story, though, because it reinforces what we talked about in our Bible study, our Mark Bible study, uh, last week. And we were talking about the difference between power and authority. And that comes up pretty frequently here. It comes up in our Old Testament reading from Deuteronomy. It comes up a little bit in our understanding of uh, the unclean food that some people were eating uh, in the epistle in Paul's letter. And then, of course, here in this wonderful passage about Jesus' exorcism in First Mark. So it is wonderful to think about. What do we mean by the difference between power and authority? And according to many dictionaries, they'll lay out the difference. Power is something that is grabbed or something that is forced upon somebody else. We can feel the sense of somebody else's power being exerted upon us. I always thought of my father as the power figure in my household. It was a very traditional household in a small town, central Pennsylvania. And when dad spoke, we listened. And he didn't necessarily have to, you know, swing the paddle or anything like that. He just spoke with authority. I remember the first time I came home with a hickey when I was in uh, junior high school. And uh, I tried to cover it up wearing, you know, well, you know, hoodies or whatever it was I was wearing. Uh, and we were in the middle of eating dinner because dinner was always sat down. We all sat down at the table together. And in the middle of the conversation, we were talking about what we did at work or what we did at school. And I was talking about band and he was talking about what he was working on with the water and sewer systems. And he was describing one of the water, water breaks that he had recently had to deal. And in the middle of the conversation, he just stopped and said, and we'll never have one of those again, will we? And I remember that sense of, oh, that's power. <laughs> that was a powerful admonition from my father. No more hickeys, no more love bites. Uh, I have to say, I don't think I ever had another one after that, at least none that I'll own, to, own up to. Now, on the other side of power, though, is authority. And authority is something that is granted or given because the individual has a sense of authority. I, I have to say, I think my mother had the authority. My father may have had the power, but my mother had the authority, and that was because she approached child rearing and child raising and and relationships with each of us in a very different way than my father did. Now, my father, of course, did not have, he did, grew up without parents. Uh, he grew up in the household of his aunt and, and then lived with his older sister. And so he never really had a father or a, a mother who was present and able to do that. My mother grew up on Walton's Mountain, I swear. Uh, and so the kind of a th persons that she grew up with had a strong sense of authority and a strong sense of engagement with children. And so my mother had really great examples of mother and father in her life. And so when she spoke, she didn't have to raise her voice. She didn't have to threaten. She didn't have to look down. You knew when she was disappointed, but she always explained things to us. Kind of like the way that, you know, maybe uh, Charles Ingalls would explain, explain things to Laura in Little House on the Prairie. It, it seemed very simple at the time, but it was also really quite touching. And it was also interesting because all of us kids responded to mom's teaching, mom's preaching, mom's engagement, because she didn't have to wield a power in order to force us to do things. She simply spoke with authority, an authority that was granted by us, that was given to her by us, her children. Now, I love both my parents immensely, but mom had the authority. Because when she spoke, she spoke with a great sense of knowing what we wanted, knowing what we needed, and also you believed that what she was saying was absolutely true. I think that comes out of what's happening here in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus speaks with authority. He's not forcing anything to do, like the scribes were always shaking their fingers and saying, follow the rules, follow the rules, follow the rules. But Jesus spoke with a sense of authority. He spoke as if we understood and we continue to understand his words to be those that come from God. His guidance, his challenge, his invitation, his love. So when he turns to the unclean spirit and says, be silent and come out of him. It is not a threat, but it is God's authority 
with which he speaks. I think when we are invited to, again, listen to prophets in our age, we have to be careful to be very closely discerning whether we are hearing words that are coming from God's authority or whether they're coming from man's power. And we have to make sure that we are discerning what we understand that to be. Sometimes we and people in faith will say, you have to do this because God said so. Mm. That's a challenge for any rebel. <laughs> the human spirit is a rebellious spirit. But if we were invited to do things because it puts us in right relationship with God and puts us in right relationship with one another, those words, those prophecies do seem to come from a place of authority. Now, places of authority are not necessarily going to change the world, but they certainly can guide us to do that, to change the world around us. Last week in our Bible study, we ended with a quote by Albert Schweitzer. And to those who obey him, meaning Christ, whether they be wise or simple, he will reveal himself in the toils, the conflicts, the sufferings which they shall pass through in his fellowship. And as an ineffable mystery, they shall learn in their own experience who he, Christ, is. Because Christ does not wield power over us. We give Christ the authority that is due Christ 